Do you want me to stand on it or what? So, Merry Christmas. Hope you guys had a good trip down. Fire away. We're seeing obviously kind of a uh, you know revamped depth chart. Um, just put. How, how much does that play into adjusting the playbook? I mean, a little and not a lot at all. Just what do you have to do to? Yeah, a little bit. Down? Obviously, we're down. Well, there's four tight ends that played in the Clemson game, and three of them aren't here right now. So to say that we're going to be able to do two tight end sets is very irresponsible to say, you know, and to think that we're going to be able to play Nate Atkins every single play of the game. So certainly uh, it limits what you can do, if anything, out of two tight end sets because we really don't have a second tight end. Um, you know, so that changes things. But then again, everything that we um, – install and put in offensively we try and do conceptually where you know multiple guys can do multiple things so you may see a lot of the same plays but but um just with different people doing it and then again at the same time it's you know you got to be creative we were in a bind last year as well in that bowl game and didn't have a couple running backs and didn't have a couple quarterbacks and and i had some guys out with covid i mean it was all kinds of stuff going on last year so um find a way how are Van and Brooks? What are their status? Uh, Van is uh, not here right now. He won't play this week. Um, um, Brooks, uh, doubtful. You know, still working through some things off the field. You decided to be call plays? And I have, have but I'm not telling you guys. Um, <laughs> but, again, it's a group effort. You know, everything that we put in, we've been working on as an offense all month. And the offensive staff is putting the game plan together. And, and the play calling part of it, to me, gets, you know, is a little overrated in the sense that you've decided on a lot of what you're doing during the week and during the prep. And obviously you got to have a feel for calling plays on game day and things like that. But but um, we got good coaches on that offense and and um, and uh, good players. And it's up to us to put together a good plan for them. Does you have enough film on Tyler Buckner to get a feel for? Not much. Um, no, not much. Yeah, not really. You know, you go back and you see the two games and you see he's a really talented quarterback. and. Uh, Drew Pines, a really talented quarterback, and they made Tyler the starter to start the season. So that kind of tells you everything you need to know. You see his athleticism being able to run, so we've got to do a great job with the quarterback run game. You see the athleticism and his ability to throw the football, for sure. Uh, but no, it's not a lot. You know, you got to go back, and we've done this with him and the backup quarterback. Go back and watch high school tape, even you know, just to analyze and, and watch them as players. But he's a talented guy. You're not named the starting quarterback for game one at Notre Dame. Uh, if you're not a talented quarterback. And the same thing goes with the tight end position. I mean, Notre Dame is sent off a lot of tight ends to the NFL. Yeah. So is the guy behind Mayer look like? I'd say they're all good. I mean, you're right. Every single year it seems like Notre Dame's got a big NFL prototype tight end. And obviously he was a really productive guy and a weapon in their passing game that they targeted an unbelievable amount of time. So that's certainly a, a big loss for him. But they've got capable uh, – They've got capable tight ends for sure. They, it's not like they don't. We don't have the bodies right now. They've got the bodies at tight end. They just don't have the experience that that uh, maybe the other guy did for them. Shane, I realize that Pup Howard's out here practicing. Is yep. he eligible to no. play? I mean, what, okay. what, just practice. Sorry, my shoes on time. Uh, just practice. He's out here. Um, you know, we gave him the option, and he's a football player, man. So he just wanted to come out here and and practice. And what about Anthony Rose? Is he eligible? He's eligible. What, do you think he might get out there? I do. Yeah. With, with the practices as a whole for, for the bowl, how, how would you characterize how things have gone? Just kind of across Re the board last year. Really good. Really good. Um, I've really been proud of them. You know, we told them, I think I told you guys this, I mean, we told the players in the first team meeting that if you're in this room, you're telling us that this bowl game is really, really important to you. And um, the way they've practiced and the way they've handled themselves has shown me that. I mean, it's been some of the, even going back to Columbia, like the ones, once you get down here, it's exciting. You're at the bowl site and all that. But the ones in Columbia, when exams are over and Christmas is coming up and you're the only people in town or the only people on campus, those are the ones at some places I've seen that just drag and they can't they, – sometimes they're not good. But that wasn't the case with our guys this year. I mean, they were, uh, they were awesome. It was actually some of the most uh, fun and energetic and competitive practices that, that we've had uh, all season. They, they've practiced um, – they practiced the right way, that's for sure. Shane, with that right tackle position, what have you seen from, from Kaysen, and, and how do you balance maybe giving Kyshawn that opportunity you've seen what you have with that? Yeah, we've rotated those offensive linemen quite a bit this year, and, and uh, you know, we've played, what, seven, eight every game, and and um, 
you know, certainly Tyshawn was a starter in 2021, and, and we feel like he's a starter in 2022. Uh, so he's a talented player. And then Kaysen's a guy that he's really gotten better every single week in practice. And, um, you know, he's a guy you're only allowed to take 70 players to every away game. We traveled Kaysen to every away game this year because he was that close to playing. Um, plus, we would actually spend some extra time with him on the road trips and just get some extra meeting time and things like that and take advantage of that. But he's a guy that I think is going to be a really, really, really good player for us um, as, uh, as he moves forward in his career. And he's a guy that has really gotten better as this year has gone on as well. And we've got a ton of confidence in him. Shane, how's CBS at running backs? Is he 100% full go? Yeah, I don't want to say he's 100%, but he's full go. He's uh, He did everything today, David. In Columbia, he was a little bit limited where we were just kind of building him up each day, but he was uh, he was 100% full go today. There's nothing we held him out of. And, um, you know, he may tell you his body feels 100%. I don't know, but as far as uh, – being cleared to do everything. Yes, he did everything today. And with Carroll by, out behind him, who, what's the depth look like that position? Juju um, and those Juju, guys. Um, Juju, CBS, and, and Rashad Amos would be the top, you know, top three right now. And then after that, you got to get creative. <laughs> How about your defensive end? You got a couple starters there. You had some young guys play too. We see from the Brian Thomas Jr. the high one fitness those guys this week. Yeah, they've. Uh, those are also guys. Brian's continued to get better. Played for us this year. Obviously, when Jordan Strong went out. In uh, game one, that elevated Brian's role pretty quickly, and he's a guy that that uh, can really rush the passer and and uh, has gotten better. Hot Rod's a solid guy, veteran guy as well. So you know, obviously, we were we were thin at that position going into the season. Then we got really thin when Jordan Strawn got hurt. Then we got really, 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 really thin with what's happened over the last couple of weeks. But you know, that's uh, that's okay. We got good players, and it's the next man up. Uh, with that, you've had some defensive. I mean, you've had a lot of defensive backs that have played young defensive backs that have played this year. You got some more guys in that position now with, with Cam and Greg not playing. I guess what have you seen from that group? How do you think I think you do that? The, the young DBs, yeah, kind of the same thing. You know, I mean, we we play a lot of defensive backs during games anyway, whether it be nickel packages, dime packages, or packages with even seven DBs on the field. Uh, so we've always tried to rotate a lot of guys. I mean, Kawan Banks was in there against Clemson on a, the key third down. And um, so he's a guy that, that has gotten better. And, and uh, you know, Emory Floyd, Keenan Nelson. Um, we, we do a lot of, just because you're red shirting doesn't mean we like put you to the side and we see you in spring practice. Like we spent a lot of time during the season trying to develop guys and, and getting a lot of good on good work against our offense and defense. And those guys have utilized it and have gotten better. And, and uh, Torian's done a great job coaching all those guys up. And, and uh, you know, last year, I guess we played this game without, what, Cam and and whoever else was out there. I know we were down some DBs, but, I mean, Isaiah Norris was a guy that played in the bowl game last year as well. So, you know, they've, they've, uh, they've gotten experience and we'll need them this week. So a couple guys since we spoke to you last, can you speak to the Norris Sellers and the Car Slater? Yeah, um, two really, 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 uh, good players, uh, Vicari, talented athlete, you know, defensive back, wide receiver. Uh, we think he's got a chance to be big time, kind of like when I, I think I talked to you guys about Jalen Kilgore and how every time, every week when I watched his tape, he was just making all kinds of plays in all three phases. That's the same thing with Vicari uh, as well. We're really excited about him. And then Lenoris is a guy, I mean, what can you say? He's a, he is, he had a special senior season as a quarterback this year. Um, he was a guy that obviously, I guess, he had some injuries his junior year. We had him, his team came over. Uh, Coach Marlowe brought his team over for our seven-on-seven -seven camp uh, this past summer, and we watched him in camp and were just blown away by some of the plays he made in that in, in camp in, in competitive seven-on-seven -seven settings. And then we told him that day, like, look, we want to watch your tape. And, we're, and, and at that point, um, you know, we weren't like, we didn't have a bunch of quarterback offers out there. I think there was one that ended up going somewhere else. And then we uh, watched Lo Norris's tape each week throughout the season. And every week he was just lighting people up. And, um, and I think he's, he's got a, I think he's got a really big future in front of him and great young man and, and a uh, ton of respect for him. Obviously he wanted to handle the situation with Syracuse the right way. And, 
and felt a great sense of loyalty to those guys, which I respect. And uh, he had a hard time telling Syracuse no. Um, and I have respect for that. He just wanted to do things the right way, but certainly circumstances changed at Syracuse with some changes on their coaching staff and circumstances changed at our place uh, as well. And, and um, you know, excited that he's going to stay in state and appreciate Marquis Anderson and Montague and those guys recruiting the, you know what, out of him at the Shrine Bowl too from what, from what they were telling me. They were texting me all week, you know, during let me know all the recruiting stuff they were doing up there too. With Vicari starting out at defensive back and then kind of going from there, you know, I mean, the more you can do, the better. But uh, for us, we think he's got a chance to be a really, really talented defensive back. And, you know, certainly there's no question what he can do with the ball in his hands and in the return game and things like that as well. But he's uh, he's a really good football player, but we'll, we'll start him at defensive back and then kind of go from there. Any other transfers you can speak about right now? Or? I don't think so. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't even know who, if anybody else has announced or said anything, so I don't want to steal anybody's thunder. But I don't. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, when do I see you guys again? Press conference two I days from now. Thursday, yeah. Probably then. I'll probably have some more information <laughs> for you. What was with the shorts? Practice. What was that decision? I always wear them. I'm getting soft. Um, no, I always wear them. I think I wore pants to one practice this year, and somebody asked me like, what was wrong, and why am I wearing pants? So. After the cold weather in South Carolina, this is like a heat wave got here today. So the sun came out. If it had been cloudy and windy, it might have rethought it. But And honestly, that thing, I didn't pack sweatpants, so I had to wear shorts anyway. I mean, I'm wearing these, but this is just what I'm wearing around that hotel. As far as the bag I had for practice, I didn't have any, any long pants on them. But I'm a shorts guy. Uh, for coaches, work. We'll go back and watch the practice tape and, and – uh, and uh, get ready for practice tomorrow. Um, players actually have the afternoon off. The Gator Bowls, you know, they do a great job of balancing, giving the players free time and then also activities. So they don't have any activities today. So for them, I'm sure, you know, they were up this morning. We had a, they had to be downstairs at 7.15 this morning. So I'm sure for some of them, it'll be a, a nap. Um, enjoy the beach, whatever else is going on out there uh, today. But not much. Today's kind of a low-key day. And, and uh, then they got the night free. And, Coach and staff are doing a little staff dinner at a local restaurant tonight, and that's about it. Get ready to go again tomorrow. Oh, I didn't even notice that. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> cold skin. I need some. I didn't even notice that. Uh, no, I did not. I don't know where that came from. Probably somebody's helmet or something like that. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I wish I did. I should have. I need to come up with one next time for that. Where's the media hotel? Y'all downtown? Uh, he's staying in it. Uh, downtown? Okay, it's a good spot. Oh, that's Somewhere right on the water, home. isn't it? Yep. Big time. Yeah, exactly. Good for y'all. Let's say going to the beach in this 30-degree weather. You know, I'm going to go out there and like go for a run or something.